So mm. I got a phone call. And she was very, very panicky and said, Mommy, 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 my heart is beating so fast. It, it, it beats like it, it's coming out of my chest. And she was feeling really bad. And I said, oh my God. I called our doctor and told him what was happening. And he got extremely upset. He said, what? How, how, how can she go to Kingston? How can she do that? She has to stay in bed and have bed rest. That is dangerous because she can get... Uh, and I told him, but you never said anything to her because I am very sure if you told her anything like that, she would have followed up on that. But you only gave her medication, told her to take it. He actually basically told her to get out of his office because she, she would, he would not deal with a patient that would kill herself. What? What do you mean, Murray that? And, and uh, we, yeah, some uh, people went into his house and shot him. Gated, um, gated community gated and everything. Gated community. You know? And that's mm -hmm. where he got shot inside of his house. Yep. <laughs> lovelies it's your girl Mel welcome back to my channel and today we are here with mommy so no no say it's another story time with mommy story time with mommy mommy <laughs> um you might can't hear it in my voice right now but I'm sick and it's been a while since we filmed like a sat down video like this cuz mommy has been sick as well and yeah but you know the work has to continue so we are just here and mommy is feeling better um still not a hundred percent but better and she is you know willing and able <laughs> to <laughs> tell a story time today again so that is what we're going to get into all right guys so let's get into that disclaimer the stories that i'm going to tell in this series are my experience my truth and my point of view over the past 38 years that i have been in jamaica and it's in no way intended to slander any person the culture of jamaica or the island as a whole hi Mel's lovelies yeah back again finally um when I considered, we were at the years 2013-14 lately and well I had a good week now to consider what happened in those years and, and some things will still come up, uh, not from my side. But basically 2014 was a very challenging year in many ways. Because as you have heard uh, in the past story, in 2000, March 2014, we moved from uh, one shop to the village where we are now still, which was uh, an adventure in itself. And then uh, before that, in 2013, I got a, an email from my son, Nikki, in Germany. And all he sent was a picture from an ultrasound. And I looked at that ultrasound picture and said, well, well, that looked like pregnancy, baby. And I was like, so? And then he was, well, what am I doing every four years? And I was, what do you mean, what you're doing every four years? And then he said, well, 2006, 2010. 2014 and I was like what you're getting another baby and then you said well look good at the picture when I looked at that picture I know one baby you know I do I said what you guys are getting twins <laughs> so that was in 2013 and that was a big surprise of course for all of us so we were kind of anticipating that but of course uh, that was not ready yet so going back to march or going forward to march 2014 after we moved uh which was a good event 
and then the good event the other good event was to have uh two new babies to the family soon to come but then in april 2014 pretty much in the beginning of the month my yumi got very sick I mean, she had a tonsillitis uh, that was like out of this world. A lot of pain, big throat, fever, everything. I mean, she was feeling so lousy. Went to the doctor, got her antibiotics, whatever she needed, and came over the uh, tonsillitis when she still was in pain and, and, and her ankles and and her uh uh her wrist uh, start to swell and she she looked puffy and didn't feel well still and still had fever and stuff so she went back to the doctor and he looked at her and said you have rheumatic fever and we were like rheumatic fever how, how isn't that a children's sickness because basically you get rheumatic fever latest but I got to learn after until you're 30 years old but mostly children are affected actually mm. it is definitely a, a, a children sickness which can be extremely severe they can even have uh, heart problems afterwards and stuff like that and so we said but Mayumi is almost 20 or she was 28 at the time why would she get a children sickness like that and it, it, it sounded weird but they did some tests and it turned out she really got that now the doctor gave her some medication and, and didn't say anything much to her and so she took the medication started to feel a bit better and then uh, a shopping trip was due to Kingston and uh, she said she wanted to go because she had some friends over there she wanted to meet at the same time and i said all right then you go i stay home and then i was in the restaurant when suddenly i get a phone call from her and mind you at that time the internet wasn't that uh like it is today like you can go on whatsapp or you can go here and there and call and have internet all over the place so mm. i got a phone call and she was very very panicky and said mommy 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 my heart is beating so fast it, it, it beats like it, it's coming out of my chest and she was feeling really bad and i said oh my god what to do now so i called our doctor and told him what was happening and he got extremely upset he said what how 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 can she go to kingston how can she do that she has to stay in bed and have bed rest that is dangerous because she can get uh and i told him but you never said anything to her because i am very sure if you told her anything like that she would have followed up on that but you only gave her medication told her to take it and and now we are family we are not really staying in bed unless it is really really grave and necessary unless the doctor tells oh the doctor tells us and we would say all right it's the same <laughs> thing the other day we were telling mommy to stay in bed and she wouldn't do it until the doctor said it yes <laughs> so that's how we are so basically that is why mayumi uh, uh didn't even think about it so i i called her back in kings now and i said look here how are you feeling and she said oh it's better now it was just like an attack or so and i said well what you do you take your time and come back home i mean she luckily at that time she was more or less finished with what she had to do anyhow and then she could relax a bit and then i said take your time don't drive too fast just come home and then what you do first thing you do is go to rest and then she came home and everything and the next day she went to see the same doctor and that doctor became very unpleasant to her he actually basically told her to get out of his office because she she would he would not deal with a patient that would kill herself and she looked at him and said but you never tell me anything you did not tell me to have bed rest you never tell me to stay calm you all you didn't give me the med medication and that was it and he was extremely unpleasant like like it looked like he was really afraid that something might have happened to her now what he did i think he he, he did a uh uh how do you call it e e k g in there mm -hmm. yeah 
and and her heart I was so. yeah and but nothing happened to her heart at that point in time up to this day luckily hallelujah but he practically threw her out of his office so he was basically upset because she did something that she was not supposed to do but she didn't know of it because he, he never told <laughs> the doctor never tell her about it so he was basically upset that she did something that he didn't, didn't tell, tell her <laughs> to not do like yeah you know so that was it for for that doctor and then uh, somebody uh, recommended a doctor at the health center uh, and she went there right after and uh, actually what happened with him he was very pleasant very nice taking very good care of her but her um, duty as of that time basically was to get a shot of penicillin every month for they said that she has to do that for about three years or more because what they did, they tested her blood for of course, for the uh, signs of rheumatic fever and, and the rate was extremely high. And they said, well, all we can do here right now, basically you have to heal on your own. You get your monthly penicillin uh, shot, but otherwise we can't really do anything much. The, the, the nature has to take care of itself, basically. So she accepted that and, and that was that, but it took her all in all uh, a good while to heal up. Now, at that point in time, 2014, I looked it even up today again, is when chikungunya entered Jamaica. I don't know if you heard of chikungunya because it was basically at the time it was mostly in the Caribbean islands. Chikungunya is a virus that is coming from Africa originally and Chikungunya means uh, in the in I don't know which African language basically to walk like an old man because actually what it does once you get it not only do you get fever your joints your I mean every muscle in your body is hurting like hell and that is what happened to Mayumi, suddenly she couldn't walk anymore. So she kind of said, oh, well, that must come from the rheumatic fever that she was more or less still having at the time. But it was not so. It was, which we found out later, not at that point in time, neither. And in Jamaica, at, uh, around them time, it started to spread all over. How, how did it um, transmit? Actually, I think it was mosquitoes. Mm -hmm. Mosquito would, would bite a person, suck the blood, and then bite the next person, and bloops, they would get the virus through that. So it was transmitted through mosquitoes. Yeah. Like, I know a lot of mosquitoes here, so it was easily... Exactly. So it was really easy, easy to transmit in Jamaica. But that was, at that point in time, it was not really that, that heavy, but so the Mayumi basically got over her bout with it, not knowing it was it, and started to gradually get better with her rheumatic fever as well. And summer came, and then uh, August came, when on the 14th of August, I got a phone call that shook me up badly. I got the call that a good friend of ours had been murdered in Falmouth in his house where he lived. Now I have to tell you about him. Actually you heard, heard about him on the side because he was one of the people who came to our rescue if you want when we wanted to rebuild the restaurant at the marina spot. He's the one from the um, blue, blue balls. balls. Story, he's blue so. balls. Yes, he's blue he balls. He is blue balls. Exactly. <laughs> he, he is, is blue, blue balls. balls. <laughs> exactly. So I was at that point in time. So he had been in our lives like for many, many years. He was like another son to me because he was about it, at the same age than Yasha and Nikki them. And when I got that message, I was completely shaken up and, and I said, what? What do you mean murdered? And, and uh, we, yeah, some uh, people went into his house and shot him. 
and we we will so, so for to remind you guys he was a german guy yeah um in the age between you know your yeah, and Nikki. Nikki somewhere he was at that moment residing here in jamaica he was working on a construction Construction side. Yeah, yeah construction was, uh, like they big, were big construct uh, construction. They were side. building like a um residential area, area yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So he was basically working on that um housing scheme. A housing scheme, yeah, yeah that's what I scheme. meant. <laughs> yeah. A housing scheme and you know, he was working on the construction and stuff. I don't know exactly what his role was but he had to do with logistics and, and uh, distributing materials, getting okay. materials, stuff like that. So um yeah that was what he was here for at the moment how long did he came back to jamaica it he wasn't was that long no it, it was, was quite he was, you used to live in kingston for a while yeah. with his wife for like two years or so then he went back shortly and, and on that side he was about since a year or so okay so it wasn't that that short and he was living in another housing scheme in his uh, in a little house by himself gated um, gated community gated and everything community. You know. and that's mm -hmm. where he got shot inside of his house yep and anyhow um so i knew the family pretty well from Ber from berlin uh, i i called the family and i said guys if i can help you in any way because i mean they were in germany their son was over here and none of them did want to come here really so they said yeah if i could maybe help them take care of everything and i said all right no problem you know so they gave me the authorization and and i let the police know that i'm the one that they could address from now on and and that uh would talk to them and then they called me and said oh yeah but you have to identify the body and it was like mm -mm, okay and the day the day that we because i was i was um i was the one who went with mommy to go and yeah. identify the body was this was that the same day we went into the house because remember on the way back on the way back on the way okay. back okay what we did um uh richie melody and me which was actually i mean you know in in jamaica things go kind of slow it was not right after we heard about it but uh, i had to go to Farmouth one time already and talk to the police get some papers organized because of course every death brings with it a lot of paperwork <laughs> and basically then two weeks after it was by the end of august uh, at the time basically uh they called me and said can you come to montego bay tomorrow we you have to identify the body so richie Mello, and me went in the car driving up to montego bay and i mean for people who don't know it's a three and a half hour drive it is right i mean we are here on the island they are way up there and we went up there and we went to the hospital where they do those uh, uh, autopsies. autopsies and on the way going Richie started to feel sick and and get weak and get feverish and I was like oh my god what do you have now you know do you have any form of flu or something uh, so he was really kind of not himself at the time and then we had to go in the hospital and where we had to wait a good while i mean that autopsy room was busy we, the, about how many people were there with other people to identify <laughs> eight ten yeah it was quite a few i mean that when we first reached there the waiting room was pretty full and then you saw people who were called in by name and they went in and and came a lot of them came back all crying or pale or are not really <laughs> looking very good you know so we were sitting there and like oh, oh oh and they made us wait a good while i think we were almost to the last down to the last until they called our name and then melody and me went in and he was lying down uh, they put him on a on a bed of course and what we understood from the police before the, he, he got shot on the side of the head but luckily they did turn his head to this side so basically the wound 
was not so visible so basically you could see his unharmed side of the face well okay. i saw the other yeah you, well i didn't see it so much and it is still although I, again, I don't even know if he was frozen or something but he still looked pretty much himself and i couldn't help myself i i went to him and and i touched his face i went like this and i said oh my god <sighs> what happened to you my son you know it was very sad and well all i had to do basically all you had to do is yeah it's him and then we could leave again and then they told us oh but uh what are you going to do with the body and i was like uh doing with the body what what you mean <laughs> yeah but once he is out of seat you you have to t uh, uh, get a funeral home and carry away the body it's, we we have to get rid of him from here you, we cannot keep him here you have to do that. and i was like what we were not prepared none at all and then um i had taken contact with a funeral home in Port Antonio already luckily and I called them and I said look this is a situation here I know I wasn't aware of this can you come and pick pick up the body and I mean they were, were very very helpful and very nice and they said of course we are going to jump in the car right now and we are coming there and we go pick him up and I was like but the thing sorry. was what did we have to wait until they came we no we did not yes we, we saw did him. have to wait mm -hmm. oh yeah then we had to wait yeah because we they had to take the right body yeah yeah we had so to we wait. had that meant for us I mean it was kind of later no I think we heard we have to pick him up before we identified him though Wow. while we were still waiting so, so we it was like in between ish uh, i just uh, knew that after we identified him we, we were still sitting there while. and waiting for the True. funeral people to come True, because the, uh, what we had to do is make sure that they got the right body to carry but so that meant after the the actual uh, identification we were still there for about two hours i think right about that and then they finally came and picked him up and we could finally make our way back and and at the same time which she got sicker by the minute <laughs> basically. well we stopped at the house then uh, passing going back to port antonio we have to pa had to pass farmers where he used to live at that time and we ha stopped at the house we called the police the police came opened the house for us and and let us look inside and and uh we asked them what how what happened you know and they said well they didn't really know because they made it seem that somebody threw in the window the front window and climbed through the window broke the window Bro yeah and then climbed through yeah show it show it in with a stone or something mm -hmm. it was it, it you could see and and climbed in and then would basically surprise him in his bed but it sleep. didn't make sense it did not make sense because then the police suddenly said well you can see because i said but if somebody breaks my window and and this is the window and there in the next room i'm sleeping you don't do that noiselessly i mean that makes noise and even then trying to huff and puff and climb through the window and stuff like that but my friend was found in his bed not getting up, not in a room, not running around, nothing in his bed. So I said, no, this doesn't make sense. If if somebody breaks in and makes noise, I would wake up. I would jump up. I would, I don't know what I would do, but maybe even close the door or, or something. Or, 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 I don't know, but not lie in my bed. And then the police said, yeah, well, they had the suspicion as well that they did actually come through the back door and faked the break in from the front after everything was done and coming through the back door that must have been somebody with a key basically or knew who, who, how to open it or whatever it was not a super special luck but it was not anything uh, easy easy neither so this whole thing and i looked at the police officer mind you that was two weeks after the actual murder happened already and I said do you have any suspicion do you have any idea what happened and the way he reacted i got the idea that he 
very well knew what was what did happen but he said no no we have no idea we don't know and i found that pretty weird you know it's like oh you guys know something but it look like you do not want to pursue it at all so that sounded very fishy to me plus then of course we had to look through the rooms and find out what and what had to because of course the house needed to be vacated the, the landlord needed back his house and wanted to rent it out again, which meant another trip down here to pick up everything. Uh, well, it was also clear that nothing was taken or anything. Nothing was, it was, yeah, it his was MacBook, not in. His MacBook and stuff was, was there, there, like his valuable stuff were all there. A TV was there, a small one that, uh, that would have normally, if I break in a house and it's small, you can carry it easy, it probably would have taken it. Um, some other stuff, even money the thing was, was in the house, I think. The thing right? was just the 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 bed, like where he died, you could still see it, and the house smelled so badly like blood. Mm. Like the whole house, they just smell of yeah, blood. Yeah, this iron. Yeah, this iron, ah. old blood, and the bed was still full with, you know, wherever he was laying, so um yeah, nothing was that was just the, clean up I anything, like I blood anything. splatters on the wall and yeah, stuff like it, it was, was like a crime scene yeah crime it was scene. a crime scene definitely um, <clears throat> but the main thing that we you know realized with that um are those policemen it was there was just no no form of um not urgency but it didn't seem like they were interested yeah in like they were it. interested you know, in like, getting it done yeah it was like okay well uh you you have to see now that you get the house empty and then uh we have to see practically that we get all the papers organized and then this is it you know and and i was really like this is how you handle murder yeah you know uh there was actually no interest in nothing and up to this day, officially, nobody has no idea what happened. Nobody got uh, uh, accused or sentenced or anything. It just um, faded away, basically. And so, no matter how we ask questions, yeah, and, try, and we insisted in many ways, yeah, and insisted on stuff. There was just no urgency for them to try anything. And what happened then too? They insisted. Oh, we have to take the laptop. We have to look through the laptop. He did have a camera. He did have a phone. They took everything and they sent it into Kingston to forensics. And of course, miraculously, all of them disappeared. They didn't get them. Nope. The family. Nope nope everything got up to and the family well wanted the laptop of course because i mean there were a lot of pictures mm -hmm. on it and it was their li their son's life and they were i mean when they heard oh suddenly they couldn't find the laptop anymore and they couldn't find the phone neither you know and it's like what is going on in this country i mean the the and the German family, they were so shocked and so disappointed and so... When, when I told them, of course we were communicating, and when I told them how it was taken care of and so, they, they did not even want to touch Jamaica anymore. They didn't have want to do anything with Jamaica anymore. When I said, okay, what you want me to do? You want me to put out more pressure? You want me to, to, to try longer? You want me to... Uh, and they said, you know what, forget it, forget it, forget it. We want nothing whatsoever to do with this island in our lives anymore. So basically, after then the next trip where we emptied out the house, then we did have to go to uh, Duncan's, to the to one office, registrar office, and get papers there. And I mean, it was a lot of uh, a back and forth and drive here and drive there and come back and, and do this. And then every time I make sure I, I check the police station and farmers, I say, do you know anything new? Did anything come? And he was always like, really, really completely bored. Yeah, well, mm -mm, nah, nothing. You know? Nothing new, no, no, no. No new information, not nothing. Nothing. 
Uh, well, of course, if you don't find out, if you don't ask, if you don't check it, if you don't investigate, of course there's nothing new. And up to this day, I'm convinced they know what happened. I'm convinced. But so I go. So that was our August. So, um, also, um, cause I just remembered, um, remember the red hair girl that was in my Berlin vlog it was her uncle as well yeah. so we're still very much connected to the family and basically me and her are close in age and have been friends from ever since from <laughs> baby baby stage <laughs> baby uh, time because lulu was born in jamaica so yeah um so yeah it was it was just they gave up on jamaica for a very very long time Mm -hmm. And I think when when was it that the first mm -hmm. time they came back? Five years ago or something. Is it five years already? Yeah, we, we were still in Norwich at the time. Oh. Yeah, so like around five years ago they came back. So it took them a couple years to 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 be willing and able and that is just the niece. Only the niece that exactly. came. The rest Nobody of the Nobody else of the Well family. she and her father. Yeah, course, yeah, but um you know it was it was it was definitely something that was very very hurtful especially to Yasha and yeah because and they were really well. really good friends i mean they were like brothers so almost. yeah and and for them it was a deep deep shock as well you know and it's like it it show you one more time jamaica can be very cruel can be extremely cruel it can be extremely nice it can be wonderful but that is the the butter side of it and the cruel side of it and especially seeing that the police just doesn't care yeah i mean that is the main issue because i mean you know murders and stuff happen all over the world but it's just that um not many you know of these murders are are actually solved and, and even seeing it wasn't even a robbery now if it had been a robbery you would say okay fine these guys try to break in and something happened and they shot him no no robbery there so had what to be is something. the reason somebody you, exactly something happened here that that put somebody up to to even send people to, if to somebody kill from work or what if it has something to do with his girlfriend or what who knows like there is it's not a robbery so there must have been a cause yeah and and like so then going on another other houses them in other housing scheme and shot nobody else they specifically That's right, chose in that house. Boom. him so you know there is a motive there yeah so why aren't you guys investigating enough but that is just a sad thing i don't feel like maybe since the last few years especially with social media and internet and people being so um verbal about it and trying to do their own investigations and you know helping the police over social media like they are literally doing more than the policemen in my eyes um but in those times you hardly ever heard of a murder being solved true you hardly mm. ever hear Most of a murder like, being yeah, solved. Another one. <laughs> you know? And I mean, to this day, you still see it sometimes. And it's just crazy. Like, they, they, they have, like, a lot of negligence that goes on. Like, there is... There is not this this urgency to do anything. Everything is so nonchalant and chill. And yeah, man, we will check out that crime scene there later. Because even, even, even when I tell you this is so current, it happened with, which is going to come up in a story time, but even with the death that we had just now with our um, friend Naomi, something happened at her house and we had to push the police to go. We literally had to pop up at the police, um, police station and say, hey, want to do something now? And what did they do? Nothing. Well, they they looked. Yeah. And okay. We left. went there and looked, and okay, we're gone again. So, but to, just to think about it, something was called into you, and you were notified that a crime was just committed, and you do not go out of your way to do your job. 
is not even to go out of your way. That is what you're being paid for. Like, do exactly, your damn that's job. Your job. That is what you are there for. And not even that, like, you literally have to go and beg them to do what they're supposed mm -hmm. to do. Like, I say this all the time. I just hope, say, within, no matter, I love my country. Trust me, I do love my country. But there are certain things that are very, very below standard below standard here when it comes on to the policemen and how they conduct themselves when it comes on to to even like some hospitals and stuff like i always say i hope and pray i don't meet into any form of accident mm -hmm. where i have to reach the hospital fast enough and be treated you might reach it fast enough but to get treated yeah <laughs> <laughs> you don't reach it fast enough, mommy. Because we don't even have an ambulance here. We don't? We used to have one. It gone? When you say ambulance supporting, mommy, tell me. Have you ever seen it? I know that a few years ago they got a brand new one. So what happened to it? They mashed it up. Oh my god. You see? Men are not what to tell know. you, but it's just like I don't know what happened to it. I have never seen it in action. True. And not in a long time for me for sure but I I do remember it because it was so proud oh we got a new ambulance <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like there is just so many things like I just wish the the government would just pay more attention to those kind of stuff because if those kind of stuff would pick up even with the crime rate and stuff if more people would get prosecuted for what they are doing yeah. wrong it would probably have a change in what is happening because right now me just feel like say no for them criminal yeah i do it because them not feel like them you are gonna them, get catch them get out scotch free yeah nobody them even look for them not feel like them are gonna get catch so there is not this like if you would be somewhere else like maybe in the states or in 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 germany or whatsoever like you know if you commit a crime there is going to be an an investigation and you have to go still be like vigilant but here them are gonna do it. They shot somebody tonight the next man and they walk right past that spot day. Like not never happen. People are doing crimes without masks, without hiding their faces, no, anything no. like that because they know say more than likely not naga happen. Civilians see what they do, not naga happen. Cause why if civilian thought they might go find you out and then something happened to that civilian there so even more civilians are afraid to even cooperate so there is so so many things that i really really wish that they would work on when it comes on to any follow through follow i mean through. on the other side in all fairness they do solve quite a, nowadays they do solve nowadays but uh, social do, media is so, the one helping yeah helping with that definitely and and if it I, wasn't for social media it would not be true. like that yeah, yeah and that is all over the world and though and the technology of course because all over well. the world social media is helping tremendously solving many crimes yeah true so it is not even that they picked up on what they're doing it's the citizens they get support, huh? being the ones that are pushing more yeah. and speaking out and going on protests if them not do something. Because even look at the social media influencer girl that um died the other day that mm. got killed. If I never feel people them while do um protesting in front of police station and whatsoever, they didn't go to the to the place they last knew she was um located until three days later yeah and of course by then everything all the, the why did you from in here said a girl missing and gone. something happened why don't you go there immediately yeah the why was she ever found by the way no she's Still until this day yeah. no nobody was found but it's just like it was people and she was a social media influencer she had people already on her platform who knew about her imagine i just want regular day glass somebody them not gonna get the support they like so. that so, no, not at all. True. so it's, it's just crazy to me that the civilians nowadays seem to be doing a lot, a lot more work <laughs> <of> the <laughs> than, than the um <laughs> 
and this is honestly not to bash the police well not all of them because i know i know a few i have a few that are my friends and they are, they are working doing, very they very are trying hard. they are trying to, to to keep up the standard Definitely. they're trying to pick it up they're trying to yeah. do a good work so i'm not bashing all of them but i just feel like there is a negligence a very very high um amount of negligence happening when it comes down to those kind of stuff and i just wish that they would you know kind of do something about it <laughs> yeah because um, jamaica has one of the highest crime rates in the entire world i mean we are really in a bad, bad shape here we only have two uh, barely three million people on this island and we have the a second or third highest murder rate in the entire world we are not talking caribbean also world so i think something has to be done there definitely because this island is way too beautiful and way too nice to be under this constant pressure and it's just sad because jamaica is such a beautiful country and they're like of the course ma major too, yeah ma big 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 degree majority of the stuff that you do hear about jamaica are so so beautiful and it's just like stuff like that overpower it so easily yeah because everybody who's not jamaican and who don't know about jamaica the first thing them ask for is is it dangerous is it dangerous can i go there even when my my german friends came down the other day they were on a one hour or one and a half hour phone call with me trying to reassure themselves that hey if i come down there what and what am i allowed to do if i'm in kingston because they were doing the dance classes in kingston and stuff what and what and i was just explaining to them hey it is not as bad as the media makes it seem of course you have to be careful like a lot of other places but you don't have to fear for your life just by somebody walking past you but that is what is spread worldwide that oh don't that's what i'm Jamaica. saying it's the you might not come back and alive. it's just so sad because there's so so many positive things about yeah. this country as well just the culture the music the people them there's so many people even though we're, we're vulgar and cussy cussy sometimes that is what is also makes us beautiful and funny trust me because you never ever a good day pan any road in a jamaica no matter which part you stand up on the road you must hear somebody a walk past who are gonna make you laugh just True. by them saying something True. <laughs> True. yeah i feel like there's no way in uh, form you're going to stand on the road for even probably 10 minutes somebody i go walk something past something will happen make you laugh very very true so I don't know it's just I just wish that we are in a day and age where we can pick up on certain things government need to spend their money for some more stuff give the police prevention to prevention Simply give the prevention. police and some more training in a yeah. something I don't know like widen the horizon for them because right now de-escalation for example it is training listen there's so many stuff <laughs> for, with police example, for example <laughs> that they would need training in but um yeah I just wish they would spend some more time on that because that is definitely something that is very 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 important because it affects literally everybody definitely it's not like it's just oh it only affects a certain you know type of people no it literally affects everybody everybody in their lifetime i got at least half a deal with police some way or somehow even if it's just a traffic stop even if you're just a drive a car even if you walk on the road you're gonna see police so them being such a vital component to 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 your country you should they should honestly try and even more so as jamaica <coughs> depends on tourism to a big degree and if we frighten away the tourists if they feel insecure to come here that is why a lot of tourists just lock up in their all-inclusive hotels and and walk out get on a closed bus and only carry to certain places but those people in my eyes they do even don't even see jamaica they well, see yeah, certain we, parts we of jamaica they see a beauty yeah but 
that is inside is in there too because if the people them are afraid because they think oh something will happen to me it's very bad for tourism as well yeah it's definitely bad um so i don't know it's just a little rant moment because it's quite <laughs> upsetting <laughs> if you think about it and because literally you have to like when it comes on to 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 crimes even the robbery at our restaurant you think nothing come out of that and everybody know who did it like no no i'm not talking about that one oh the the, the recent the one breaking the breaking sorry that's why i got mixed up <laughs> the breaking at mm. our restaurant recently not not come what? out of that the people in my tv it jerks us from my grandmother everybody knows who it is not no come out of it. We gave them the license plate number, we gave name, them the names, everything. Nobody you literally have all them. of the information and nothing. They know. And it to the police. We like did that. the background yes. work and you still not do nothing. Not that thing. So it's just like, of course, people can do whatever they want. No, then nobody's following up. On Broad deal, like nobody no business, yo. <laughs> broad broad deal like how when then tifa jerks us it wasn't it was just getting evening yeah not not yet and well if a people let it see them i do whatsoever a people give give us a name them yeah people, people saw... see them oh it's them and them and them and we wrote down the license plate number so it's just like i don't know man but anyways guys <laughs> yeah let's stop with this now we yeah we were quite you know um disheartened by a lot of things that lately. that that um Attitude. well i'm not speaking about lately that is a whole nother song uh, <laughs> but um about our friend's yeah. death and it's like a human life is not important and um you know we got back to portland and you know went through whatsoever else by september mind you that was end of august so by september i actually next story time oh sorry guys <laughs> because we do we don't with this now <laughs> and next story time sorry guys. september come <laughs> <laughs> so mom is a done a story also mm -hmm. anyway let me know what you think about our little discussion down below Comment your ideas, comment what you think would help, what could be done, what your experiences have been, if you had any, good or bad, because we don't just want to bash them, there are good no, experiences no, no. as I mean, well, as I said. A lot of very good police um, people as well. But, you know, it's just, just let us know in the comment section, see? Yeah, please, it's interesting. <laughs> Let's have a little reaction. discussion about it. Anyways guys, thank you so so much for watching. Please remember to like, share and subscribe. And guys, my birthday is coming in November and what I am wishing from you guys is to reach 50k for my birthday. We can do that, 50k subscribers. We are at 38 something right now so I just need 10,000 subs. <laughs> just, like it's a small amount. <laughs> <laughs> um but let's see how close we can get to the 50k all right so wanna share 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 if we to live in our one big family us just take everybody phone and subscribe to my youtube channel please just take their <laughs> phone and say let me a phone like me i check something on youtube and just subscribe and that's it i just well, the poor poor members of the family they will be why me get these notifications here I, my videos aren't <laughs> bad <laughs> So if the, if I do pop up on their screen, it's something good. Exactly. Anyway, <laughs> let's see if we can make that happen. Let's see if we can bring your girl closer to 50k. Um, would really really appreciate it. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye. Bye.